the number one feature I'm excited about Server 12. If I have to pick one, dynamic access control is pretty, pretty big. I mean, right now you control access to file shares using just group memberships and things like that. Uh, it just goes, uh, and what that leads to is, let's say I want to say you can only access this share if you're a member of this group and this group. Well, we can't do that. So what everybody does is they create another group for people who are a member of this group and this group, okay? And it gets so, or another, another thing. We'll, we'll create file shares and we'll say we want role-based administration. It's a great idea, it's been being pushed more and more. And the way you do it is every single file share in the enterprise, you create three groups. The people who can read this, the people who can write this, the people who control this. Microsoft has things so bad, I believe I'm allowed to say this in public, that they have 90,000 employees and 600,000 groups in their Active Directory. That leads to all kinds of problems. Token bloat, nonsense like that, and it's just hard to manage. With direct access control, you could say, for example, like for example, sometimes we'll have a group because I want everybody whose uh, title is instructor. So we'll create a group called instructor, a redundant, unnecessary group. Not anymore. Now with direct access, excuse me, with dynamic access control, you can do things like you could say, first of all, ands. I can say, got to be a member of this group and this group right there in the UI. I could also say, forget groups. If your title is instructor, you're in. So that's, that's the first thing that's really exciting. Second thing that's exciting is that these things are complicated. So you're an organization with 100,000 people, you've got several thousand kind of like local administrators, and you're building a policy that lets you not get HIPAA fines. That might be this long and it might take two weeks to figure it out. You can build one of those, now put it up on the group policy, and if I'm the local admin, who's bright but not a legal expert, I can just pull it off there, drop it on my servers. So we talked about how we can have ands, we talked about how we can use AD attributes, Another thing we do is we can classify files. We can say this only applies to files that are sensitive. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is maybe if I look at the file and it's a JPEG, and you look in the JPEG comment, it's going to say MRI. Well, let's see, we're a hospital. If it's a JPEG, it says MRI, probably sensitive. And so, but you don't have to do that. There's this magic thing you can put on a folder that says you drop a file in here, it'll scan the folder, and if it has the following characteristics, marks it sensitive, or marks it anything you want. So you can say a rule that says, if this is sensitive, and you remember these two groups, oh, and the machine you're sitting on is in lab 18. Then you get access. So it's a pretty astounding stuff. It's, a, it's really going to change. It's going to solve a lot of compliance problems. It's going to let us greatly reduce the amount of groups we've got. Because one of the other things about having too many groups is you get something called token bloat in Kerberos. That's something that when I wrote a newsletter about it in 2002, people, including Microsoft people, saying, that's not going to happen. It's not relevant. But as time goes on, we have more and more groups. We're seeing token bloat popping up. So it's going to be that's, that's going to be a fascinating tool. And best of all, you'd think when I say something like that, all these new capabilities, you'd think all the domain controllers and all the file servers have to be uh, a server to 2012. Absolutely not. One file server and one domain controller from, from uh, so I, want to, I keep wanting to say server 8, server 2012, and you're in. Cool stuff.